Some of the items that you'll be needing are these little fiberglass rods. They are about three to four dollars a piece. You can find them at uh, just general hardware stores, usually specialty stores. The next item that you'll need, I found it works really well, is a uh, car mat. You can find them at um, hardware stores as well. And it's just basically something that you put in the back of your car to keep moisture off. Uh, I think this one was about four by six. I've actually just got an assortment of tools and a little hacksaw that you'll need to cut the rods with. Uh, this is a special type of saw. It's got a, a blade that works well for cutting fiberglass and metal as well. Of course, here's general scissors, duct tape, and this is a spray foam. It's uh, an item that you spray it into uh, a cavity and it expands. It's used for filling cracks and I believe plumbing. Uh, but it works great for this as well. One thing I would like to mention is that you will need to read the instructions. It requires a special dissolvent uh, in order to take off the sticky residue. So be extremely careful with this. And once it's dried, there is it actually reads that there's no way to remove it other than sheening it off, which is sandpaper or chisel or whatever. The first thing that you want to do is carefully measure your fiberglass rod. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to guesstimate it. Uh, but if you want uniform uh, swords, you're going to want around, I don't know, three and a half, four feet long. Uh, I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to use one end as the sword itself, and then I'm going to have a little excess. I can use that for a knife or something, about a foot left over. Now that we've carefully measured our thing to be about right here, we're going to cut that. And you can just, it's pretty easy to cut. You won't really need any kind of... Uh, uh, vice for your, your saw. Hopefully not. There we go. And I now have two portions. Um, you want to make this, this is going to be the actual length of the sword. This is going all the way through the handle to the point. Uh, and that way, when you're actually swinging it, you're holding on to a piece of the fiberglass because this is the most flexible part of it. It's not going to break. This is the mat. I'm going to roll it out to be, um, as you can see, I've used this before, it's covered in that foam residue. Um, but you want to roll this out so it's uh, uh, just about the length you're going to have for the blade. And then you can kind of guesstimate um, how far down the handle it's going to be. Your handle's here, so the blade's going to be probably up here. Uh, you do want to cut it long, so I would cut it around here, and I'll go over that uh, a little later. And then I'm going to make this about two inches wide, um, just kind of guesstimating again. As I cut out one, uh, one strip, it actually runs down the length of the, uh, the rod. It's not supposed to actually, it should only go about here, so I cut way too much off. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to take that and put it alongside another strip. You're going to want two strips that are exactly the same, uh, so it's about the length of your rod minus your handle, and about uh, an inch and a half, two inches wide. All right, now once you have your two sides, as you can see, they're, they should be equal, but they're not because I just kind of rushed through it. Uh, and then you have, on one side, you have the, the traction side that'll, that on, um, on the mat itself actually goes onto the carpet. It's got little beads on it. Uh, if you want to have that, facing up both ends of that, that's actually going to be on the inside of the sword. And then once you have that, uh, you connect the two pieces with duct tape going right down the middle on both the front and the back. And once I get to the end, I've got a single strip going across here. I'm going to wrap it around on the back uh, so that there's no break in the tape. And then I just fold that end over. Okay, and then you fold it over. And we're actually going to put a second piece of duct tape around this edge to kind of hold the two ends together. I'm going to take the rod out for this. And that'll make it a little easier to match up. Okay, I've got about half of it on there, and then I'm going to 
rip it and just kind of fold it over to the other side. Now that I have the bolt the end sealed, I'll put a piece of tape over the front and the back and that'll help hold down the seams. Okay, there we go. And what this is, is it's just two pieces of plastic, or two pieces of rubber actually, wrapped with duct tape. There's the scissors here. Okay, and then next thing we do, now that we have um, uh, the basic shape of it, we can work on the tip. Now this is kind of however you want to uh, design it. If you have a template or something, you can trace over that and just kind of cut along that. Okay, and then when you cut it, you're going to have both flaps open. I'm just going to fill that with duct tape. And again, this doesn't have to be super neat. Okay. And now you can kind of get a feel for it. You've, you see it's, um, you have the rod, it kind of supports it. However, if you were to bang it on anything, it's going to fan out like that. Uh, so what I do here is I actually um, cut holes in the sides and then use this foam to fill it up. That'll give it a body. Um, and that'll make it so that it, it kind of fills up a little bit and if you bump it on anything, if you use it in, um, uh, in your sword fight, it's not going to dent in like that. It'll kind of hold its shape. As you can see, I'm wearing protective gloves because it'll stick to your hands and I won't come back off. All right, now what you have to do is you want to make sure your rod is in it. It should stay centered if you have it pushed in all the way to the point. Um, and that, and actually this foam stuff is going to help hold it in place. Um, all right, and then I'm going to cut some little slots in here and that'll uh, give me a point in which I can get the foam into the uh, prop. And again, this stuff gets everywhere. Uh, one thing I found that it doesn't stick to is actually duct tape and this uh, plastic here. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. It may, um, it'll help protect your, wherever the area you're working in. As you see, you can't really stop this. It just kind of keeps going, which is why it's so messy. And once this dries, we can move on to the second phase. 